heart failure, arthritis, Alzheimer's and even cancer. Let's speak to Mikhail Khosiborod, a cardiologist at St. Luke's Mid-America Heart Institute, head author of several pieces of research on the effects of semaglutide. Thank you very much indeed for being with us. So there have been some quite big claims, including that this could somehow slow down the aging process. What, what, did, what do you make of that particular claim? Well, I think we uh, need to be very clear about what we know from scientific studies that have been completed. And what we can say is that the use of these medications that were initially developed for treating type 2 diabetes and uh, weight management or overweight and obesity uh, has clearly expanded now. We have very solid data uh, that uh, these medications can reduce the risk of heart conditions such as heart attacks and strokes uh, and potentially reduce the risk of dying from cardiovascular causes. Uh, we also know that in people with the most common type of heart failure, it can improve the debilitating symptoms associated with that condition. And the latest research just presented at European Society of Cardiology yesterday, actually showing that it may reduce the risk of uh, more severe heart complications, like having to be hospitalized to go to an emergency department due to worsening heart failure. And research that was published earlier this year also indicating it can help with people that have diabetes-related kidney disease. So it's really a range of significant uh, benefits that people with various heart and kidney and other conditions can derive. You know, aging process is a very complicated issue. I guess one could say that uh, if people with heart or kidney disease uh, can live longer and feel better, uh, in a way um, that probably addresses that question somewhat, uh, but slowing down the aging process is a very complex scientific uh, concept that will require more data to confirm. Mm. And, and why do you think this drug is having such a, an effect? Well, I think uh, these medications have uh, really pluripotent effects on multiple organ systems. They act on the heart and the blood vessels, uh, on the kidneys, on the liver, on the brain. Uh, so, uh, and most of these effects clearly appear to provide uh, some benefits, including, as we've talked about, better blood sugar control in people with diabetes, weight loss, heart benefits, kidney benefits, and potential other benefits that's currently uh, in development. But I think it's also going back to the question of, uh, you know, the overwhelming effects of obesity as a chronic disease on multiple organ systems. Uh, so when you target obesity, both through weight loss, but many other effects these medications have, you can really have a multitude of benefits, uh, which is what we're essentially observing here. Just very briefly, do, should there be some health warnings about who uses it, though? Well, like any medication, it's not for everybody. And uh, there are certain uh, precautions that uh, prescribing labels in various countries where these medications are approved for use clearly state. Uh, and uh, uh, it's not uncommon that patients that take these medications develop some gastrointestinal effects like nausea, for example. Uh, in majority of the time, uh, it's uh, seen usually early when these medications are started and gets better over time. But some patients can tolerate them. So, as I said, it's not for everyone like many Mikhail, other medications. Mikhail Bosikoziborod, thank you very much indeed for your time. Thank you.